Hey everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to be taking a closer look at the Affinia H479 3D printer. So let's start off by taking a closer look at the unit itself. If you're not familiar with 3D printing, uh, it's a relatively newer consumer technology that allows you to print 3D objects such as this cube right here, which you will note is three-dimensional, uh, using uh, your own setup at home, such as the one that we have right here. So uh, first off, printer itself is right here on my left, your right. We also have a stack of accessories right here. I'm going to kind of go through all these, show you some of the example things that we have printed here, as well as some of the uh, examples that Affinia sent along to sort of demonstrate what this printer can do. And um, we'll kind of give you a better idea of how to get this up and running if you wanted to purchase one of these for your own use at home. Uh, but basically, you have a platform here, and that's where the printing actual, actually happens. The platform needs to be moved around so that the uh, print head, which is right up there, the little nozzle at the bottom, can actually uh, push the plastic out once it's been heated up onto the uh, print area right there and kind of build your 3D model. So uh, you have three axes that uh, this can move on. The x-axis is uh, handled by the actual print head itself moving to the left and right up there. Uh, the y-axis is handled by this arm which can move um, I'm sorry, the y-axis is handled by uh, this plate which can actually shift forward and back that way and then uh, this arm here will move up and down for the uh, z-axis and that will give you all three dimensions. Uh, the unit itself is of course made of metal as you might be able to tell so just uh, sort of flipping around here so you can take a look at the back. Uh, you have a ribbon cable here that connects the uh, print head up there um, to the uh, USB connection which is actually kind of right here. There it is. Uh, so the USB plug plugs into your computer. It comes with software, which I'll also be showing you really quickly uh, as well, that you can use to uh, load 3D models and print them. And then uh, the last component, at least the last very visible component, is going to be this right here. So this is your filament spool. Uh, this particular print printer will only uh, be able to print using ABS plastic, so bear that in mind. And uh, it does come with a spool of ABS plastic, uh, which you can set up just like we have right here. You feed the filament through this uh, guiding tube, it goes over into the print head, and then um, once you've actually set up the printer and start printing something, the nozzle down here uh, will heat up. It actually gets quite hot, so you should uh, bear that in mind and, and take proper precautions. It's got a little cooling fan right there that will help to keep it from overheating, and then uh, it will simply push the plastic out onto the base plate there and print you a nice 3D model. Now. Um, Apart from that, uh, we do have a set of accessories they've included to make sure that you can get everything up and running. So you got, of course, AC adapter, simple standard AC adapter cable right there. Comes with a power brick as well, fairly sizable, but uh, should give you all the power you need for the unit. And then we also have this box of accessories. And I do like the accessory package they've included here because it's got lots of little thoughtful touches. So you get a pair of gloves, since it does get hot, especially uh, this base plate um, can heat up after it's been printing for a while, so the gloves are a welcome addition to help keep you from burning your fingers. We also have a set of clips here, so these are just basic little office clips. These are the ones we've been using so far. Um, what we've been using these for is to actually hold the base plate down onto this metal plate because there's another little uh, plate that you push on top of that and keeping that stationary is very important. So clips also included. Uh, here are those base plates that I already mentioned. Now you might notice that some of these have some of the red plastic already in them. Now um, there's a couple different options that, that you can go with. What's recommended uh, in the manual is to actually cover these plates with uh, some, some plastic, so um, some masking tape for example. Masking tape is what they tell you to cover it up with. We tried that and we found that it actually um, can lead to the, uh, the plate shifting around a little bit, so we ended up printing without that. That results um, in some of the red plastic going into these little holes. It can be removed uh, without too much difficulty. We're just using a push pin to kind of poke that out of there um, if they do get a little clogged. But here is the unused base plate, which as you can see does have little holes and that helps uh, align the plastic as it's being pushed out of the uh, print nozzle uh, and keep it stationary on there as it's printing the rest of uh, your 3D model. Apart from that, you get a couple, uh, or a pair of snippers right there, and again, that's just really handy because you do get some little trailing pieces of plastic from time to time, so you can use that to clean up your work. Here's another larger clip, which I'm not sure what it was used for, but there it is. Uh, you get a little scraper right there, so um, this is going to, of course, uh, allow you to scrape uh, built-up plastic off of the base plates, for example, but it's also very helpful for once the uh, 3D model is printed out, to, you got to kind of uh, separate it from the base plate. So very handy to have that as well. You've got uh, some knife, a short knife right here uh, with some extra blades 
So you can use that again to help uh, trim some pieces off of the, your 3D models once they are printed. Got some tweezers, sort of some, again, removing extra little bits of plastic as they might build up. Uh, and then this is uh, for assembly. Um, we have it pre-assembled right now, so we're not going to be showing the assembly process, but uh, it is detailed in the manual for how to set this up. It comes mostly assembled, but uh, they do give you an Allen wrench uh, key and uh, set, so you can use that to uh, assemble or disassemble the rest of the unit. So here's an uh, additional spool of the filaments, and uh, this will come in uh, 700 gram or one kilogram spindles, as you can see right there. Uh, this is 1.7 millimeter thickness um, on there, so bear in mind that is the size of filament that this particular printer will accept. So this is a red spool, and uh, as you might assume, the color of the spool of filament that you use will correspond to the color of the 3D printed model that comes out. So we have some red there. We also, of course, have the white that's pre-installed right here. Um, once it is installed like this one, uh, I've set up the uh, little printing platform right there. And we have some demos we can show you of this printer actually going in action. Our very own Mr. Lamb has been uh, practicing a lot with this one. He's been very fascinated with the 3D printers. And uh, he's done a lot of trial and error. And that's the, definitely the type of thing that I think a lot of the folks at home might uh, be doing a bit of because this is sort of a newer technology that uh, not a lot of people have a lot of experience with. But this was the uh, configuration of these clips that he found worked quite well in order to keep them out of the way of the print head. Uh, it will do a brief um, uh, test print right up here at the front edge every time you queue up uh, a new 3D model to print so that uh, helps keep that out of the way and also helps keep this platform in place. Uh, as far as volume and size, um, which is an important thing for 3D printers because obviously the size of the printer is going to dictate somewhat uh, the size of the models that you can print, uh, the volume on this particular platform is 5.5 uh, inches three ways, so 5.5 inches length, width, and height. That gives you about 166 cubic inches of actual volume that you could print in uh, one big model. Uh, if you're into the metric system, that's about 2,726 cubic centimeters, or, or 14 centimeters squared uh, each way. So that is the size of the 3D model and the, the uh, volume of this particular printer. Uh, you also have a wide assortment, of course, of colors and different filaments that you can purchase. So Finia provides you with this, this little plastic filament uh, guide right there showing you some of the different colors as well as down here the uh, owl model that they've printed out using a bunch of those different colors. So uh, these are going to range in price depending on the uh, temperature that they're supposed to be run at as well as the color uh, as well as the size and capacity. So again a wide uh, variety available right there. Apart from that, uh, Finney also pr provides you with some uh, good documentation for getting everything up and running. So here's your unpackaging thing. This has all of the uh, included accessories that I already mentioned to you. Uh, but this is going to take you step by step uh, through uh, popping off a couple clips that are uh, installed there for shipping, setting that up properly, and um, getting all of your accessories in line. You also get the installation and 3D printing setup guide right here. So this will take you through attaching the spool, installing the drivers for your computer so that it can recognize it via the USB connection, uh, loading up the print material filament, preparing the flat platform, leveling the platform, and then calibrating the platform because uh, it's a very important thing to set up the platform so that the device knows how much space there is between the print head up here and the platform down there. So uh, calibration very important, but of course the software as well as this sheet will guide you through that. And then of course there is a full H-Series 3D printer manual right there. This is going to go into much more depth as far as the construction and assembly and proper use of this device. So now let's take a closer look at some of the amazing 3D things that you can print with this particular printer from Affinia. We have a selection here on my right. Uh, all these items right here were actually sent over by the manufacturer as just sort of a demonstration of the different colors and some of the different examples of uh, 3D models that can be printed. So for instance, here in the back, we have some rockets. If you're into model rocketry, possibly an option for you. As you can see, they should be fully functional. It's got the little thing going up the side for the guide rail and all that good stuff, a couple different sizes there. Here is that owl, which uh, seems to be very popular from their model. Um, again, this is a bit more sizable, so uh, the print time is something to take in, into consideration. And uh, we do have <coughs> a bit of a benchmark that we've set up for printing time, but there's a little owl. You have these somewhat impossible seeming things right here. For instance, this is sort of a, a, a nut on a bolt, but it's got caps on both ends. So you look at that and you're like, how, how did this get onto that? I don't know. The, well, the answer is that it was printed that way, and then it's got some scaffolding that kind of holds it up, and you, you pop that off, and then you have a nut on a bolt, and it's kind of a cool thing. There's a, some smaller examples of that, as well as some examples of the different colors that we have here, light blue as well as dark blue, 
uh, some red and some green. We have some yellow here in sort of a, a Taj Mahal looking little model that uh, was also printed right there. We have this thing which is really cool. We can see some use of, of gears going on there and you just spin it around like that and that's, that's pretty cool looking right there and that's of course using the uh, white uh, print filament. Here's a little hand keychain, give a little okay. Oops, uh, a couple more little gears over here again, spin around some little ball bearing, gear, uh, bearings I should say, right there. Uh, we have a vase, ta-da, a little blue vase right there, suitable for drinking. Uh, and that's what they sent over. Now we've, we've also been testing this out. I should say Mr. Lamb has mostly been doing the testing on this because again, he is absolutely fascinated by 3D printers. So uh, over on this side, we have a couple of the items that uh, we printed out. So uh, here's a cube and this cube um, is special because this is the cube that we are sort of basing our little 3D printer uh, benchmarks on just to determine how long it takes to print a specific type of volume. And I actually have a chart I can show you in just a moment that Steve put together for that. Um, we also have Dunny right there, a, little Dunny, a couple of Dunny models. Uh, these uh, were from the Autodesk website, so they were available there. And uh, these were downloaded and printed out. The large one here, for example, took about 12 hours to print. And I'm actually not sure about the smaller one. But uh, obviously, larger items are going to um, take longer to print. Now, another thing we wanted to point out here, there's a bit of discoloration in this one in that this was, uh, according to Mr. Lamb, this was due to uh, lack of cleaning the print nozzle. So bear in mind that you want to keep that print nozzle clean in order to prevent any anomalies in the actual plastic as it's printing. But again, this is a type of thing, uh, it's, it's a hobbyist toy uh, or, or tool, either way you want to look at it, and it is the type of thing that uh, some trial and error um, is, is going to be involved in. The more things you print, the more uh, idea, better idea you'll get for um, how to print things and what types of things work better. Uh, to that end, we have a few examples over here. So these are some of the earlier uh, items that we were testing out. So um, we have, for example, a sword right there, a little, uh, little katana sword. Now you might notice a little bit of warping here. I mean, this is a very, very thin layer of plastic. Um, speaking of thin layer of plastic, uh, the layer thickness that this uh, particular model, the uh, H479, is able to print uh, is between 0.15 and 0.4 millimeters and uh, of course the thinner the plastic the more uh, flexible or it, it might end up being um, but we found pr printing particularly very thin lines like this uh, is a bit more of a challenge so again that's another thing that might take a little bit more trial and error here's a little maybe an AK little gun right there also that we printed so if you're into models or that, that sort of thing you, you know it's a pretty cool uh, application this I believe is an ice sword um, although I'm not sure which particular gaming or comic book world this one might be from, but this is another model that uh, Mr. Lamb was able to, to drum up. And uh, here we actually have an example of the uh, initial printing as well as once you've broken it away or broken it off of the scaffolding. So when you start printing, it will often print a small uh, open base. So you'll notice a lot of air gaps in there. And then it will actually print your 3D model on top of that because of course as it's printing anything, it needs some support underneath uh, to print whatever might be on top. And once that is printed, you can simply uh, carefully break this off and you can see it's starting to come off here. And I'm not going to go too far with this one because this is a fairly delicate sword, but this is a, a, an area where you might want to make use of those utility knives uh, that are included because uh, especially some areas where it might want to grab on a little bit more, you can help separate it there and kind of remove your printed model from the scaffolding that it prints on. So before we move on to software, let's take a quick look at uh, a very fancy Excel sheet that Steve put together. Uh, basically what we're theorizing about here is how to create a benchmark for these 3D printers when they come along to, and uh, essentially the benchmark is based on speed. So again, we have our little, our little cube here that we've printed, and this is a solid cube. It's not hollow at all. So uh, this is just a way to establish a volume-based benchmark. So um, the, that cube that I just showed you is the smallest cube on this little chart right here. So that is... Uh, 16.36 uh, cubic centimeters right there and that took about 92 minutes to print or so about an hour and a half and as you can see as you go for larger sizes here larger volumes that number will of course scale up correspondingly and you can see the plot out on a little chart right here and um, if you get up to the the really largest or the largest feasible sizes that are possible um, this one goes all the way up to 1048 uh, cubic centimeters, but uh, as we already mentioned, the build volume of this entire thing is 2,720 cubic centimeters. So um, just to give you an idea of how long that would take, 2,720 
And that would take about 190 hours, which is somewhere between seven and eight days, I believe. And you'd probably run out of filament before then. So again, that, that's going a bit beyond what this is actual, actually capable of. But do bear in mind, as you're doing 3D printing, it can take a bit of time to print. Now, apart from that, uh, we also have, of course, the 3D software itself. And this is the 3D software that comes along straight from Affinia. So you can see uh, it gives you this uh, 3D uh, layout here. And this is simply representing the volume that's available on the 3D printer itself. And uh, you can, of course, grab that and move it around with your mouse. I'm going to go ahead and load up a, uh, a model. So I'll go ahead and try the ice sword. Um, so this is the ice sword that I already showed you guys we had printed. And you can see it laid out here uh, on the 3D graph with the x, y, and z axes. Uh, now, a, f a function of the software is that uh, in pink is, is shown the parts of the sword or the model itself that are OK, according to the program. You also have this red part right here, and it's basically telling you there's something wrong with that particular element. Now, without it getting too far uh, into the um, uh, 3D modeling, which, which you can definitely delve into other programs if you're into 3D modeling itself, um, but you do have a fix function, or at least I'm told there's a fix function that's buried in here somewhere. Fix, there it is. So click fix, and the 3D program, uh, this program is just automatically going to adjust that model a little bit so that it fits. Now, a couple other things to bear in mind is uh, you might notice that the sword in its current state is a bit larger than the actual model itself. So you do have some rotate functions here, for example. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and rotate the sword, and you can choose 90 degrees or 45 degrees or whatnot. So let's try 45 degrees. Uh, I'm going to make the sword flat. Uh, with the, or at least parallel, the, the wider side of it, parallel with the base of the 3D printing, uh, of, of the 3D printer. Um, we found that if you were to, for example, uh, have it positioned this way, up and down, the really narrow uh, sections have a bit harder time printing more accurately. So um, flat seemed to be the way to go for us, although there we go, that's flat. Uh, now you'll also notice that the sword is still a bit too large um, to, to currently print right now, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and rotate it that way so that it will fit a bit better on the actual, uh, the actual panel. And then it's still a little bit, bit uh, large end-to-end, -end. so um, we also have the scale option right here. And I'm just going to scale it down by about 20%, and uh, that should do it. So now it's scaled down to an appropriate size. And then uh, the last thing we're going to do, since currently it's floating, as you can see off the base, we hit the uh, the fit. I'm sorry, not the yes, the fit. No, not the fit button. Uh, the last button we want to hit is the place button. I'm sorry, place. And uh, basically, the program will then place the sword at a position on there where it feels that the 3D printer can uh, do the best job of actually printing that out. Now, you also notice that there's still a little bit of space under here, and that is for the, uh, the scaffolding that I already showed you that it will print out. It's also known as the raft. It will generate that automatically for supports for whatever 3D model that you're printing, and it'll print that out sort of around it so that it can uh, build your 3D model on top of that. So there is a quick rundown of the uh, 3D program that is included along with the uh, Affinia H79 printer. Now, just uh, two final things to point out before we close here uh, with the demonstration I was just showing you guys. There's one other thing that uh, it would prompt you to do if you attempted to print, and that's do initialization. Uh, the initialization function is available in the software, or you can also do it manually by holding down the button right there. And then it initializes and starts up the print head and all that good stuff. Also, for system uh, or software compatibility, this is going to work uh, with Windows 7, Windows 8, and I've totally, I'm sorry, Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7. Um, not listing Windows 8 right here, but uh, compatibility modes might work with that as well, as well as Mac OS 10.6 and above. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button right down there. Don't forget to subscribe for additional videos from Newegg TV, and we'll see you all next time.